Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. He said, but, but it's not about baptism. He said, I did baptize some guys, and yeah, you know, we baptized them, but we didn't baptize them, he said, into my name. Today we get to baptize Dan, but not into the, not, not into the name of our church, you know. I mean, I, some people were like, so if I get baptized at that church, am I now like, if it's Calvary Chapel, like Calvary Chapelite or uh, Amazing Graceite or, I, no. You're joined to Jesus when you get baptized. And Paul, he saw what happens. You know, do you, can you just picture this actually going on in a, in a church that is kind of coming from a worldly background? I mean, they, they got the worldly influences all around them. They come to the knowledge of, that Christ died for them. They're all excited. And then they start doing um, what is natural to a worldly mindset. And they start identifying with different, you know, heroes of their faith. You know, I'm a Peter. I'm a Paul. I'm a... Apollos and Paul says wait a minute but do we have personality cults today where people are like I follow this guy or I follow that guy this gal she's the the great prophetess of my life you know and I think wait a minute Paul is trying to point them back to who to Jesus he says I wasn't crucified for you Paul Peter wasn't Apollos was, it was Christ who did the work and in fact because of different guys doing the baptizing, we have to be really clear when we baptize someone that we tell them, look, when we baptize you, we're not baptizing you into our group. Now, I know some denominations teach you, you must be baptized into their group's name or you're not even in. By the way, if they do that, you should run. That means they're a cult. It means that they're trying to take the, the honor and glory that is due only to the Lord and somehow put it on themselves. We're the important ones. Everybody look at us. And that's a big danger. Those guys someday will stand before the Lord for what they're doing. And I don't think he's going to be very happy with them. You know, he's going to say to some of the ones, you know, they say, well, we prophesied in your name. We even cast out demons in your name. And, and we did all sorts of miracles in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never what? I never knew you. Man, I don't know about you. When you read that in Matthew's gospel, did any of you kind of get a shiver like, oh, I don't want to be in that group. You know, I want to be in the group What he says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was sick or in prison, you visited me. When I, you know... You, you, when I was naked, you clothed me. When I, I want to be, and they, they, those people say to him, when do we do that to you, Jesus? And what was Jesus' answer in Matthew? When he did it to the least of my brethren, he did it to me. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest. That's the words I want to hear. Not the ones for the goats where he says, you guys, Out. You don't get to be in the flock. You, you know, I never knew you. Now, I've gone over this before, but that led me into a search in the Bible. How do I make sure that God knows me? Not that I know him. That doesn't matter. You can do all the studies you want. You can say, I know God. I've studied. I use the example. You can say, I know the president. Let me into the White House. I know who he is. I got his name, you know. Does that get you past secret service because you know him? No. Now, if he's walking by the, 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 the front door of the White House and he looks out and you're on the lawn trying to get in and he knows you, he knows you, it's a different story. He said, oh, that's my friend. Let him in. The only way you get in is if he knows you, not you know him. And this is the very same thing with God when, get, when it comes to getting into his kingdom he has to know you, not you know him. So that, that threw me into a tither. I mean, where's the verse that says how we can make sure he knows us? Who cares if we know him? I want the verse that says, I know that he knows me. Right? By the way, I found it. 
Anyone know where it is? Just for quick, tri just trivia, you know. We, we, I'm going to give you a hint. It's in the book we're studying right now. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. You want to see? Look, look, just turn a few pages. Well, this will be preview for way long time from now because you know how fast I go through the word. In a couple months, maybe a year from now, we're going to get to this, but you'll have forgotten, so I'll remind you then. What's it say? Verse 1, 1 Corinthians 8, 1. Now concerning things, it says, um, well, sacrifice to idols. It says we all have knowledge, but knowledge makes arrogant or puffs up. But love does something different. What does love do? It builds up. Yeah, it, it love edifies. Now, if anyone supposes that he knows anything, it says he is not yet known as he ought to know. You know, if we think we got it down, forget it. We're just scratching the surface of what, what there is to learn. You know, we think we know about the Lord. <laughs> just any of you studied this book for a while? There's a few of you been around a while. You've been studying the Bible for a while, right? Uh, you know what I notice is that the ones, the veterans of, of the Word, the ones that have studied like 20, 30 years, daily reading the, the Word. When you talk to them, you go, hey, hey, how, you got it down after 20, 30 years? See, like after two years, they got it all down. Oh, man, I've been a Christian two years. I know the whole Bible. After 20, 30 years, they go, Man, I am just scratching the surface. This is like a, you know, isn't it interesting how maturity changes your view? You're like, there is so much yet. I mean, you learn so much, but you realize how much more there is to discover. It's like an onion. You know, you peel back one layer and you're like, wow, there's a whole nother layer in here. And then you get through that layer and you're like, oh, there's another. And you know what I found out? There are so many layers. I just keep peeling and peeling. And I keep seeing more and more sweet things of the Word of God that just speak to me down deep into my heart. And this is one in particular. If you suppose you know anything, you don't know yet as you ought to know. You just don't know. But, verse 3, you should know. In fact, you should highlight this one. You should imprint it on your brain. Maybe write it out, put it on the fridge. Or on the mirror where you shave, wherever you're going to see this every day. Because this is the verse that tells how to make sure God knows you. This is the only one as far as I'm concerned. If I, if I don't get to teach you any other verse of the Bible, but I teach you this verse. And it sinks into your heart, into your mind. And you take hold of this verse, I did my job. And in eternity you'll thank me. Because you'll be there. Right? What's it say? But if anyone, what's it say? Studies the Bible day in and day out. Gives to the church all that they have. If anyone goes on missionary journeys for Jesus, no. What does it say? If anyone loves God, he is what? Known by him. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.